explaining the factors that have led to surge in AMR. Hi, and welcome back to the AMR video series. In our previous video, we shared a story on the discovery of antibiotics, the pre-antibiotic era, and the looming threat of a post-antibiotic era. If you are yet to watch it, please do. It's really interesting. In this video, we will proceed from where we left off. We will educate you on the various factors that could drive us to a post-antibiotic era where antibiotics will be ineffective. Sounds so sad, right? But remember, it's something we can counter if we work together. That was just a recap. Here we are. What are the factors that drive the rise of antimicrobial resistance? First and foremost, it is important we realize that antimicrobial resistance cuts across human health, environmental health, and animal health. These resistant microbes can be found in the soil, animals, hospital settings, human beings, water bodies, waste dumping sites, among others. It is possible to transmit these infections from one person to another. The main drivers of antimicrobial resistance include misuse and overuse of antimicrobials, lack of access to clean water, sanitation and hygiene for both humans and animals, poor infection and disease prevention and control in healthcare facilities and farms, poor access to quality and affordable medicines, vaccines and diagnostics, lack of awareness and knowledge and lack of enforcement of legislation. Let us start with misuse and overuse of antimicrobials. Let's start with a basic self-assessment. Remember when you were sick and visited the hospital? The doctor might have given you some antibiotics. Did you finish the dose? Did you take the medications as advised? Have you ever purchased antibiotics without a prescription? Now this is the most common. Have you ever self-treated a flu with antibiotics? These questions indicate some of the ways we misuse and overuse antibiotics by not following a prescription regimen appropriately and using antibiotics to treat viral infections such as common cold. Sometimes, our physicians prescribe antibiotics for us even when we do not need them. This could arise from pressures that we as patients exert on them or financial incentives offered upon prescriptions of certain antibiotics. Let's move on to agriculture. Some of the common ways in which antibiotics are misused and overused include giving antibiotics to animals as growth promoters. They may also be given as a prevention measure to prevent these animals from getting bacterial infections. This arises from the poor and congested conditions in which we rear these animals. In fact, it is estimated that 80% of all the antibiotics produced by pharmaceutical companies are used in animals. That's a huge number. Since they are in suboptimal quantities, they stimulate the development of resistance. So, what happens when you eat this bacon or drink milk produced by these animals? Some of the antibiotics in their little quantities are transmitted to your body, as you can imagine. They will precipitate antimicrobial resistance. Similarly, what happens when you use this fecal material containing the resistant microbes as manure? They penetrate your plants slowly. I know someone will be thinking, well, I don't take animal products. I am safe from all this resistant stuff. I am sorry to disappoint you, but it is all connected. The resistant microbes can also be gotten from our green fleshy vegetables. That is why we are called upon to sensitize our farmers on antimicrobial resistance too. Lack of access to clean water, sanitation and hygiene is also a major drive of antimicrobial resistance. This problem is largely endemic in the urban areas, especially in urban informal settlements. Some of these resistant microbes in our soil seep into our drinking water. This soil may be heavily contaminated with resistant bacteria, especially in areas with poor waste disposal. Children are highly exposed to these resistant microbes due to their playful behavior. Taking contaminated water will not only expose us to infectious diseases, there could also be a probability that some of these diseases could be very difficult or expensive to treat. It is recommended that we maintain proper hygiene, especially hand washing, to minimize this threat. Lastly, it is important we realize that lack of awareness and knowledge of antimicrobial resistance, especially among the public, highly contributes to this threat. It is quite sad that many people out there have never heard of antimicrobial resistance. Thus, they may be engaging in practices that contribute to this menace. 
having listened to this video, it is upon us to educate them. This will be very critical if we intend to induce behavior change towards these practices. We would like this information to reach as many people as possible. Please become an AMR ambassador by sharing this video with your networks, be it your friends or your social media networks. Let us all raise awareness of antimicrobial resistance. If we work together, we can overcome these threats.